Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and I'm really excited about this little squirrel because this is my first absolutely for sure waterproof sculpture that can go outside. And the thing that makes me really happy about it is that I was able to do it with the same techniques and methods that I use for my paper mache clay sculptures. As a matter of fact, you could use any of the patterns in my book, How to Make Animal Sculptures with Paper Mache Clay, fill out the armature in exactly the same way using slightly different materials, and then put this material on the outside of it, and you would have an outdoor garden sculpture. He was made with a pattern that was made out of foam board rather than cardboard that I would normally use uh, on a paper mache sculpture. The padding to, to make him rounded, uh, instead of using a crumpled paper and masking tape, I used aluminum foil and hot glue instead. So it's actually waterproof from the inside out. And then the skin is made with a product called Freeform Sculpt that's uh, made by the Smooth On Company. It dries as hard as a rock and waterproof. Uh, the paper mache clay is really hard too, but if you put it out in the rain, as I have found out, uh, no matter what you put on it, it is eventually it's going to soften and, and get weird. Uh, paper mache clay, any kind of paper, just does not work outside for long-term display in your garden. This stuff, I'm pretty sure, is going to work just fine outside. It's still an experiment. I haven't actually tried it. I'm going to put it outside and find out what happens to him. But since water's not going to get in, the only thing that could happen to it is if it gets really, really brittle when it goes down to 20 degrees below zero, which is possible. So we're going to find that out. He will get painted, um, so it's not quite done. He's going to get attached to this, um, this concrete block um, just to protect that, that uh, connection right there to the leg. My, Shouldn't have made him stick out quite like that because it's a little bit too delicate. But um, he'll do just fine on this concrete block. Now let me show you just really quick how this was done. I'm not going to go into the fine details of it or anything, but I just want to give you a real, real quick overview of how this guy was made. Once I had the armature all put together, then I squished down the foil really tight so that the armature would be very hard and solid. Then I made a bunch of little balls of both part A and part B of the freeform sculpt, and that way I could mix up just a little bit at a time. Uh, this particular product has a slightly longer working time than other epoxy clays that I've tried, but you still want to mix it up in small batches. Then I started smoothing it on over my armature just by putting it on there and squishing it down really hard and smoothing it out. I made the product itself a little bit softer by putting some water on my hands and then mixing it up again. You can get a little too carried away with that. If you put too much water, it gets really squishy, so, um, so a little bit helps. Too much, not so much. I put on a really thin coat of the epoxy over the whole sculpture. This is the first coat I wanted two different layers to make sure that there were no pinholes, no way for water to get in. I paid special attention to the dip where the back meets the tail because I didn't want to accidentally dig in too deeply and leave a hole where water could get in. I made the acorn separately over a small wooden ball and the patterns on the acorn were made after the epoxy hardened with a Dremel tool. You have to use a mask when you use a Dremel tool or when you're sanding the epoxy and as with any brand of epoxy clay, you do need to use gloves while you're working with it. Some people claim on YouTube videos that you don't need gloves, but really, you can't believe everything you hear on the internet. If you don't believe me, read this safety data. Every epoxy product has one. The eyes, I stole off of an old teddy bear that I bought at the thrift store. And I worked on the muzzle rather late one night. And then in the morning, I could see that the squirrel's nose was crooked. So I did some surgery on it. It's possible. It's a little bit harder than when you're using uh, paper mache clay, but you can still do it. I tried using a craft knife, and then I used a file. But in the end, it turned out that coarse sandpaper was really the easiest way to remove uh, the excess material that I needed to. I should have done all of that outside because the dust can really be messy. After removing some of the material, I was able to add some more and put the nose back where it belongs. New epoxy clay will stick to cured epoxy clay and you can smooth it out very thinly so that there's no dividing line. 
I used a strip of wire along the outside edge of the ears just to make that thin edge stronger. And I used wires inside of the hands and the feet. They're just so thin, I wanted to uh, give them a little bit of extra support. The acorn was, uh, like I said, made separately, and I held it on with a little bit of, uh, of the freeform sculpt. I had to hold on to it a little bit because the, when the clay was real soft, the acorn kept trying to fall off. I just had to hold on to it um, just for a few minutes until the epoxy uh, firmed up. And then I added the clay and I sculpted the hands, which also helped to hold the acorn onto the sculpture. I didn't spend a whole lot of time sculpting the feet and the hands. It would have been possible to make them really detailed if I wanted to, but I didn't think people would be looking at him that close once he was on the ground out in the garden, so I just decided it was close enough. After the first coat of clay was hard, I added the second coat, and I put the fur texture into this second coat. It, I got a little carried away with the fur texture. I played around with it and tried to find a rhythm that allowed me to get all of the fur to look the same. Um, I wasn't entirely successful, but it was kind of fun to play with. I put little squiggles in and went back over the pattern and deepened some of the lines uh, kind of randomly just to give it some interesting shadows. I don't know how much of that is going to show up when it's finally painted. Now what I'm going to do between now and the next video is go over this fellow, do some sanding, play around with some rasps to um, see if I can add a little bit of detail, get everything smoothed off on his face the way I want it, and then I'll go ahead and paint. So that's all I've got for you today. Um, I'm going to be putting the pattern for this squirrel out on my blog so you can download it if you want to. Uh, you can use it for an epoxy outdoor sculpture, or you can make a paper mache clay sculpture, or use paper strips and paste. The patterns all work no matter what you put on the outside of them. So I'll go ahead and put that on my blog. I'll put a link down below. Um, I'll be painting this guy. This week, in my next video, I'll show you how he looks out in the garden when it's all done. And in the meantime, I hope you'll let me know if this is of any interest to you or not. Um, would you like me to do some more experimenting with this or put out any more videos about it? Uh, I'm excited about it, but obviously I don't know if you are or not. So let me know. Um, put a comment down below. And in the meantime, come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. See you there.